and even youngsters they are prone to death due to cardiac arrest very frequently and that is very uncommon uh, more than 1000 cases have arrived who have uh, died due to cardiac um, arrest and the staggering 80% of it is age group of 11 to 25 years and they are not even obese uh, and doctor many people are saying that covid 19 patients like who have already got covid mm. are they more prone to heart attack there is another thing in the news like covid shield like people are saying that if they had covid shield then they are probably more prone to heart attack and blood clotting mm. what do you have to say is it a myth or is it a it's a real fact there are many trainers who you assist these um, youngsters to get into a very rigorous kind of fitness training just when they are beginners i think their yeah, cardiac yeah. health is not that strong to start that rigorous so right. what kind of pattern should a person who is very new to this fitness thing should start you know like probably starting little bit um, not not in the fitness level which some probably an athlete has right how does a person or an individual understand that if they are having chest pain it is a heart burn or is it a heart attack like what are the main symptoms that they should be aware of yes and um, just like you mentioned that yeah. few people have the history of diabetes or yes. uh, hypertension so how should do and even you know they have like inherited uh, family um, cardiac related issues Absolutely. so how should they start this fitness what are the screening procedures if Hi everyone I'm Pallavi Banerjee I'm a lifestyle and corporate influencer and today I have with me Dr Saikat Kanjilal who is the consultant interventional cardiologist at Manipal Hospitals Sarjapur Road So doctor as per the recent news that uh, has been circulating uh, the young adults and even youngsters they are prone to death due to cardiac arrest very frequently and that is very uncommon so recently i studied that in the last 6 months in gujarat uh, more than 1000 cases have arrived who have uh, died due to cardiac um, arrest and the staggering 80% of it is age group of 11 to 25 years and they are not even obese so what do you think is the main reason the potential cause behind this kind of cases that's a very good uh, question uh, pallavi i think uh, first of all i'd like to thank you for having me here today and this is a very relevant uh, subject a lot of questions arise in people's minds regarding this now uh, we in india you know indians are known to be at high risk for heart disease now despite the young age you know data suggests that uh, asian indians were you know where indians are we develop heart disease at least a decade earlier than most other populations now uh, the younger age group also the majority of cases happens due to the atherosclerotic burden or the cholesterol related heart disease that is there which is commonly what is attributed to adults or older people with heart disease where you have cholesterol deposition plaques in the coronary arteries rupture of them leading to a heart attack now data suggests that even in uh, you know in individuals less than 40 years of age in the age group that you are talking about 50% and above are due to coronary atherosclerotic disease Now there are other non coronary non atherosclerotic causes of this heart disease and they could be inborn errors or you know uh, inborn diseases or changes in the coronary artery anatomy what do i mean by that the coronary arteries are the blood vessels which supply the heart and they provide the blood supply to the heart now some people are born with a different anatomy that renders them more prone to a heart attack so these the an example would be uh, uh, you know uh, alkapa as we call you know so that is one of the causes a lot of young children and young women or young uh, females develop are more prone to developing autoimmune blood vessel inflammation disorders they are called vasculitis associated with diseases like sle now that is one of the reasons for another you know heart uh, attack to happen currently the lifestyle is a major challenge for most most of us individually and on a society level so lack of proper exercise dietary uh, you know changes that is happening the stress levels that is there you know these are also and and a lot of uh, young people initiate on smoking and usage of tobacco yeah, so that, was my that also the that also doctor, adds so to this so lifestyle yes. changes like alcohol abuse yes. con consuming more alcohol and mm -hmm. also smoking that contributes to the younger adults these days yes. who are having more cardiovascular issues right absolutely so it is it is a well known fact that tobacco 
used in any form, especially smoking, mm. is one of the major risk factor for heart disease, mm. especially coronary artery disease, which leads to heart attack and stroke. And uh, you know, it is known that anybody who is currently smoking, no matter what the duration of the smoking is, nor, no, uh, and no matter what the the dose of smoking, it doesn't matter if it's 10 cigarettes a day or 100 cigarettes, whatever the dose is, their risk for incident heart disease multiplies and goes up significantly. And so also with alcohol. Now there is a paradox with alcohol. There is some data where people are might be aware that uh, taking alcohol in moderate quantities heart, right? is good for the heart. Especially okay? wine, that's what yeah. So I, I will start with saying that the recommendation is that if somebody is not drinking alcohol, do not venture into drinking alcohol because you think it's going to be good for the heart. Mm. If somebody would like to drink alcohol and they do not have heart disease already or they do not have liver disease or any other ailments, then they should restrict to moderate amount of uh, alcohol consumption. Now, what is a moderate amount of alcohol mm. consumption? The data suggests that they are not more than two standard drinks for a, uh, for a male and not more than one standard drink for a woman. But this data come, arises out of studies for Caucasians. And we Indians have a smaller body surface area than the Caucasians. So our limits are much lower. Mm? Mm. So we wouldn't recommend alcohol as a, as a treatment, right. obviously. Okay. So this, it shouldn't go across to the people that, I you know, Dr. Saikat says that you can drink alcohol to reduce heart disease, no. And the other fact is, alcohol is a habit forming. Mm. drug you know is a, is a this thing so if you initiate on alcohol you are likely to increase the consumption and as you drink more there is associated uh, you know bad uh, you know lifestyle choices because you are right. the food that you are you know, consuming sleeping habit exactly and there's there's more consumption of other substances mm. like tobacco like smoking the food consumed is different sleeping habits like you said mm. you know so that is also there and consuming alcohol at a higher level generally adds to obesity mm. adds to hypertension may predispose you to uh, diabetes increases inflammatory levels in the body and actually worsen your heart health and predispose you to a heart attack right yeah. so doctor as we are speaking about substance abuse mm. so not only just alcohol and also smoking mm. so we have seen it is an increasing trend and risk in uh, fitness enthusiasts these days that they are consuming lot of steroids mm. and uh, you know injecting or having it right. in oral form and they are also having lot of caffeine related um, high caffeine percentage energy drinks mm. and then there are a lot of cases that that are happening like recently that they are prone to lot of heart attacks what have you to say about that Right. So I think uh, this has always been the case and it's reported more now. Uh, people do, you know, people are using performance enhancing drugs, uh, mm. which could be uh, nutraceuticals like amino acids and certain proteins uh, for major performance enhancement by athletes. Right. People use androgenic, uh, you know, uh, hormones mm. and also anabolic steroids. Mm. Now the, uh, the, it is known, it's a well known fact that if it is taken these drugs are taken under without supervision rather True. they lead to deleterious effects on the heart and the vascular system hmm. to start with if you use you know uh, androgenic uh, uh, you know hormones they lead to an increase in the thickness of the heart now heart hmm. is a muscle is a, is a muscle pump hmm. it needs it, it what it does is in every cardiac cycle it it receives blood and it pumps blood out if the thickness of the heart muscle is increased, mm. there, the stiffness of the heart increases and that is a prohibitive factor in its proper pumping and function. Mm. So, so as to say this thickness of the heart muscle predisposes you to rhythm disturbances of the heart, it predisposes you to heart failure going forward and also creates a de demand supply mismatch in the blood supply to the heart itself leading to angina and the other symptoms. Mm. So, and because of the increased risk of uh, you know rhythm disturbances of the heart, people can have sudden cardiac deaths, mm. right? And apart from that, if you use anabolic steroids that we, as we were talking about, they, are, they increase the risk of uh, hypertension, they cause changes in uh, abnormal and uh, uh, worsen changes in the uh, the lipid profile of people. So the good cholesterol, which is the HDL, goes down. The triglycerides and LDL, which are bad cholesterols for the heart, uh, colloquially said, uh, increases. And this is, uh, this predisposes you to a heart heart disease. Mm. So so as to so also as to increase the risk of diabetes. So these are 
the reasons why uh, uh, people uh, could have more uh, you know a tendency towards uh, you know uh, heart disease increased True. heart disease and these medicines like they are generally not even prescribed by doctors right no, they're so easily all. available by these trainers they give so is there some way like government can keep a tap of them like to or some kind of you know enlightenment yeah. programs campaigns for these fitness enthusiasts so right. that they're aware not to take this because right. they even even women take it like weight loss pill and these stuff nothing is required no prescription nothing is required so i think what would you uh, I totally agree with you. So I, 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 uh, I have a, I have a thought where I tell all my patients that your health is your responsibility. Now, uh, you know, putting everything on the government is very difficult. There has right. to be a, you know, a public-private uh, partnership. There should be sharing of responsibility. Mm. At the end of the day, my health is my responsibility. So, mm. what I do with my health starts with me. Mm. Now, obviously, there has to be awareness. Mm. So, health professionals like myself and others should. Uh, you know, uh, should should spread this awareness that you know the nutrition nutrients that you need for performance is available in in nature in your food. If you have a healthy, balanced diet, you don't need performance enhancing drugs, right. and that's the reason why even in in, in professional athletics mm. or sports, the sports bodies have come out with anti-doping uh, laws yeah. and all that. So they're not allowed, right? Mm. So there has to be more information. Uh, this has to be spread across print media, social media, whatever uh, whatever else can be done. Mm. The government can definitely should should play a role mm. by by restricting the availability. You yeah. know, as you said, it's easily available. That should mm. not be happen, happening. It should only be available on prescription. And not only just substance abuse, doctor. Like there are many trainers who you assist these um, youngsters to get into a very rigorous kind of fitness training just when they are beginners. I think their yeah, cardiac yeah. health is not that strong to start that. Rigorous. So, right. what kind of pattern should a person who is very new to this fitness thing should start? You know, like probably starting a little bit, um, not not in the fitness level which some probably an athlete has, right? Correct, correct. So, you know, uh, that's that's a very valid point because that's very important for people to know that at wh whatever level of fitness we are, you know, yeah. your level of fitness might be different from what what I am at, and you know. Uh, exposing everybody to a similar kind of regimen is, hmm. is, is dangerous and sometimes deleterious. Hmm. So the point is if you are not doing something regularly hmm. and then you are suddenly exposed to that kind of activity without knowing what your risk profile is and hmm. what your uh, you know, physical fitness is, hmm. it could be dangerous. Now, the, for example, we start off with the first question that you asked me about so many deaths reported. Hmm. In Gujarat, we saw a lot of people playing dandia and suddenly falling. Right. So a lot of times you are static and sedentary all through the year right. and suddenly during that one time in the year where there's dandia or whatever it could be or anything else where you suddenly get active and do rigorous exercise which you're not used to True. With, and you, without knowing what your underlying risk profile is what, mm. what are the risks to your heart mm. and when you do that you could succumb to a, an acute uh, heart event mm. so it is definitely necessary to for, for anybody who's, who's planning to start a you know, fitness regimen or is going to upgrade or up-titrate his level of activity from mm. where he is, mm. he should have a medical consultation, evaluate yeah. what his risk factors are. A lot of us may be diabetic, we do not know. Diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, these kind of disease conditions do not come with symptoms. They don't announce themselves. Mm. So you would not know them. We call these silent killers. But why? Because you don't know that it is there. Mm. You will only get to know if you test for them. So which is why if you are going to embark on a new exercise regimen mm. or you're going to up titrate your, uh, you know, enhance your, uh, you know, your exercise regimen, you should get yourself evaluated. Right. Check what are your risk factors? Evaluate, are you diabetic? If you are diabetic, what is the level of sh uh, sugar control? Hmm. Are you uh, dyslipidemic? If you are, what is the level of your uh, cholesterol levels? If you are hypertensive, how well is your bl blood pressure controlled? Hmm. So look at all these things. Look at your exercise capacity. Run on a, a treadmill uh, supervised by, uh, by a medical pra practitioner and see. Hmm. And then go on and go on to these, uh, you know, physical activity regime. Yeah. Yes. And um, just like you mentioned that yeah. few people have the history of diabetes or yes. uh, hypertension. So how should those, and even, you know, they have like inherited uh, family um, cardiac related issues. Absolutely. So how should they start this fitness uh, right. thing? So like I said, uh, to start off with, like I said, Indians are at a high risk of uh, heart disease as a race, right? A lot of us they have a family history of young heart disease where mm. young people have had heart disease and succumbed to it or have had treatment for it. There's a family history of diabetes, hypertension, mm. etc. So this needs to be evaluated. So following on the point that I said, 
have a health checkup where you see what your risk factors are how active are you what is your physical activity level what is your weight overweight obesity is a hmm. major risk factor sedentary lifestyle is unhealthy lifestyles in terms of sleep disturbances sleeping hmm. late hmm. keeping up late not following a healthy dietary pattern all these contribute to your overall cardiac health hmm. so having a general health checkup or a cardiac health checkup by a professional uh, would would be, en enable you to risk stratify so yeah. what is your risk for developing heart disease if you have a family history of somebody uh, you know uh, in the family who's had a heart attack at 30 say 30 35 mm. then you are at a higher risk so you, you it is it is important it's screening imperative screening is important that's screen what for uh, you know these risks so what are the screening and, and how frequent should a person that is screening? that is individualistic Okay. So, like I said, if you have a family history of, uh, you know, young heart disease, you start early. Hmm. Any Indian above 40 should be screened for heart disease. Okay. So, start off with whether you have, uh, uh, you know, family history or not. What are the screening uh, procedures? If the I screening know? procedures would be to consult a cardiologist or an internal medicine specialist who hmm. would take a good history hmm. as to look at what are your, what is your uh, risk profile in terms of diabetes, hypertension, lifestyle, etc, etc. Hmm. Do lab tests like your cholesterol, your sugar levels, check your blood pressure, hmm. look at other things like your lipoprotein A, look for uh, urinary uh, you know, protein leak in, uh, you know, which would indicate uh, disease of the kidney, look at a retina if you are a diabetic and hypertensive, how well is it controlled, look at changes in the body due to diabetes and hmm. hypertension. And find these problems early and treat them so that you, you reduce the risk. And followed by an evaluation of the heart with ECG and electrocardiogram, mm. do an echocardiogram to see how the heart is doing. Stress the heart by you know simply doing a treadmill test. Mm. People with higher risk profiles can even undergo a CT calcium scoring to see uh, what is their future risk for heart disease. So these are very important. Depending on your risk profile, the doctor suggests mm. what should be the frequency and how soon you should do. Okay. Okay. There are. Uh, like you said, uh, genetic conditions where you have familial hypercholesterolemia, where the cholesterols are very high. Hmm. And in these kind of uh, families, even young children, adolescents and young children come with heart attacks. Okay. So, so you they have to start the screening yes, much earlier yes, because of the yes, family yes. history. There are genetic uh, heart muscle disorders like uh, you know hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, for instance. Hmm. So if you have a family history of that, you you screen accordingly. Hmm. So this is this is individual based, individualistic. Hmm. Okay, yes. and when we are discussing about sleep for so long, so what yes. is the correlation between a good sleep pattern and a you know good sleep hygiene, and how much does it impact the cardiac health overall? Yeah, yeah, very, very, very important. Sleep is is a luxury nowadays, hmm. right? Uh, good sleep is very very essential for the body to recuperate from from the day to day activities mm. now we all know we live in times which are stressful work demands that you work more and you sleep less but there also are lifestyles sometimes uh, you mm. know uh, they guide or they, they 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 announce that you you do not sleep as much so we we purposefully don't sleep many a times now sleep is very important what is recommended is as you grow older you know, from as a child, you sleep much more. You're recommended to sleep 12 to 14, up to 16 hours mm. in a day. For an adolescent, growing uh, young adult and adults, it is recommended that you sleep for seven to eight hours. Mm. Six to nine hours is okay. So data suggests that if you sleep less than six hours a day, or even more, more than 10 hours a day, it is it is bad for health. It is bad for the cardiovascular health. It is known that sleep disturbances mm. leads to a high sympathetic drone, means your adrenaline levels in the body are high, leading to hypertension, leading to, with the high sympathetic drive, you can have heart rhythm disorders, leading to sudden deaths in the, in the night. Mm -hmm. Sleep disorders associated with uh, obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Obese people who have obstruction in their upper airway mm. during sleep, leading to low oxygen levels, can also precipitate heart failure, hypertension, heart rhythm disturbances, and it is also known that uh, people with sleep disorders can have uh, have a tendency to have more clotting episodes and also they have high inflammatory states. So all these factors combined hmm. increases your risk for heart disease, which is why maintaining good sleep hygiene is very important. Right. So we have heard about less hours of sleep, but like yeah. you mentioned, more than 10 hours. Oh, yes. yes. That is uh, something new that I yes. heard. Is it because so, the deep sleep is less? That is why they're sleeping more or what is no, the see, underlying reason? No, see, what is considered normal? Hmm. We say that an average Indian would probably be a five foot seven inch. Hmm. You would have somebody 
much taller mm. you would have somebody much shorter so you have mm. different kinds of people right. similarly there are people who may sleep for 4 or 5 hours and feel refreshed there may mm. be people who sleep for 10 hours and not feel refreshed mm. but the general consensus is that you sleep you know you really need about 7 to 8 hours of sleep mm. as you grow older much lesser it we do not know the exact reason mm. but people who sleep much more than that usually about 10 hours mm. are also known to have higher incidence of heart attacks and uh, you know uh, vascular events okay. than uh, people who sleep lesser mm. now the exact cause of it is not known it is corroborated that there could be more uh, inflammation there could be uh, neuropsychiatric reasons why they are sleeping more mm. because depression and anxiety mm. is associated with higher heart disease mm. so you you connect the dots and say probably that is yeah. why your your heart disease risk goes up mm. you know so uh, the exact reason is not really known got it yeah. uh, and doctor many people are saying that covid 19 patients like who have already got covid mm. are they more prone to heart attack well uh, see the point is covid 19 is was was a pandemic that uh, you know all of us have seen during our lifetime it is like any other infection a lot of viral infections that happen all through the year this was an infection any infection that happens can lead to inflammation of the heart muscle mm. can stimulate or activate your immune system into uh, developing clots and thrombus this happens acutely or subacutely or the period of the infection or sometime thereafter mm. the people who have developed covid were are very unlikely to develop have have any uh, Uh, have any chances of persistent heart disease so many years down the line okay right it is the same with the uh, you know uh, with any other uh, you know infection for that matter hmm. okay hmm. and uh, there is another thing in the news like covid shield like hmm. people are saying that if they had yeah, covid yeah. shield then they are probably hmm. more prone to heart attack and blood clotting hmm. what do you have to say is it a myth or is it a, it's a real fact well it's a bit of both okay uh, so, uh, so what happens is uh, Uh, there are various uh, vehicles for this uh, vaccines which are created vaccines are basically particles they have uh, you know they have proteins which the body responds to mm. now some of these particles are considered foreign by uh, the body's immune system mm. and they 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 raise a response to it this happens acutely there's a condition called as uh, you know vaccine mediated thrombotic thrombocytopenic uh, purpura okay. now this is a condition where the some particle in the vaccine initiates a response by the uh, by the immune system of the body mm -hmm. leading to clots and platelet activation etc but usually what is known it happens in the first one or two or maximum four weeks okay. so there is no way that this is going to happen Not years down years the line no. years so it can happen acutely mm. and what was the incidence the incidence was about four cases in 1 million mm. who stats mm. in in asians it was found to be about 0.2 cases in 1 million uh, you know vaccines administered mm. the risk of developing clots and having complication due to clots due to covid 19 infection itself is much huge much more larger right so when you compare that the mm. risk is very very minimal True. it is similar to any other drug given so when i give you a med, you know give somebody a medicine Uh, for blood pressure mm. there are effects and some side effects that we always watch out for mm. some people may be allergic to certain drugs when you give a drug you watch out for that it is very similar to that so i don't think there should be i would really want to uh, in emphasize on this there should be no panic mm. people who have taken covid shield are not going to develop clots because of some data that has come out this data was always there with us got it okay hmm. and the incidence was very minimal and it happens only around the vaccination it is not going to happen now got it yeah. uh, doctor the next question is as a matter of self awareness hmm. how does a person or an individual understand that if they are having chest pain it is a heart burn or is it a heart attack like what are the main symptoms that they should be aware of you see uh, when you have chest pain you mm. must realize that the chest has many other organs and structures apart from the heart right you have bone mm. which is the skeletal structure you have mm. ligaments associated mm. you have the lungs you have the food pipe True. and uh, various other uh, structures mm. apart from the heart mm. Now when there is chest pain mm. there is there are two things that happens one e either there is panic that it is a heart attack mm. two especially in, culturally in this country people consider that to be gas right? right most of the people say it's gas and they treat gas so there are certain you know definitions of chest pain related to the heart unfortunately mm. 
the cardiac chest pain has not read those textbooks and they don't know the definition of chest, uh, chest pain. We know for a fact that 60% of patients don't have any symptoms or have very atypical symptoms. They could be diabetic, they could be elderly, they could be women, they could be people on steroids. Mm. So do not look for a particular pattern of chest pain to diagnose. Even qualified experienced cardiologists can be flummoxed by it. Mm. Look at what are your risk factors. If you have risk factors like I discussed earlier, then any chest pain is significant you rule out. If mm. there's a doubt by the patient, by the treating general practitioner or a specialist, hmm. always rule out heart disease as the cause for chest pain because heart disease can be instantly fatal. Hmm. Whereas other things like bone related pains, gas for example, or lung related pains, uh, some of them but can may not be. But intense heart burn, it, it can Yes, it can mimic it. It, it can uh, mimic it, okay. but it cannot cause heart attack. Okay. The, usually the chest pains that are associated with, the, with a heart attack are described as intense pressure squeezing kind of pain which can radiate from the uh, you know the the left side of the chest go up to the throat usually you don't have pain going above your jawline okay. or going below your umbilicus mm. it can go to the left arm radiate to the left arm or even the right side mm. but these are what is described you you don't have maybe only about 30 40 percent of patients may complain of it the remaining mm. do not have complaints of this thing mm. and you must have also heard of silent heart attacks a lot of times you have silent heart attacks where people have not been aware of the fact that they have ever had a heart attack. They come mm. for a routine health checkup. During an ECG and echo, you find that you, the patient has already had a heart attack and he's been lucky to survive it. Oh. So which is why... Had no symptoms at all. It's called a silent heart attack for that reason. What are silent heart attacks? But you can have, that be fatal? That can be fatal. Okay. Right? So, you, you know, we hear of a lot of people, uh, you know, we come and hear that somebody went to bed in the night and didn't even wake up in the morning hmm. you know that could be one of the one of the ways uh, you know and and the people who survive and hmm. it is found later that's how you know it is a silent heart attack hmm. yes. so when we talk about this um, uh, heart attack i mean hmm. heart burn or heart attack if it is a chest pain we should diagnose it and take it as a top priority to yes. get the cardiac yes. health yes. check so from there what do you have to say about the cpr thing hmm. uh, everybody should be aware of the basic use of cpr right for this correct, purpose correct. It is, it is, this like is a very institutions office absolutely it's a, it's a very important point and i think uh, manipal this year from the world heart day has taken an initiative to train more and more people in CPR awareness and CPR technique. Mm -hmm. It's very important to understand this. I'll, I'll just get, dwell into something called as cardiac arrest, you know, which is mm -hmm. a little different from uh, a heart attack, which people are aware of. Now the heart is a muscle pump, like I said, mm -hmm. and it has an elaborate uh, electrical system, conducting system within it. Mm -hmm. Now, when there is a problem or some kind of a disease in that electrical system or something which leads to a problem in this electrical system, mm -hmm. the heart uh, can have an electrical abnormality leading to the fact that the ventricles or the lower chambers you know they, they contract very feebly hmm. thus not allowing blood to go to the uh, to the rest of the body hmm. this could lead to an intent you know a sudden death so if the person person succumbs to it it's called sudden cardiac death hmm. if the per person uh, survives it it's called a sudden cardiac arrest hmm. now the only way you can survive and have a chance of survival when you have this because it, this once this happens a hmm. sudden cardiac arrest situation you will not survive beyond minutes hmm. okay? okay so only a bystander can help you there hmm. okay so two things are necessary hmm. one to identify somebody who who's having a sudden cardiac arrest hmm. two being aware of what to do and that is basic CPR. Hmm. So you have to make sure that you, by giving chest compressions and giving breaths to the patient, you keep the circulation going. So what do we do in uh, CPR? You use your hands and you compress over the chest wall. You compress about uh, 100 to 120 times in a minute. So this, this, the sequence is 30 compressions followed by two breaths. So you compress and allow the heart chest to expand, hmm. recoil so that you allow blood to fill in and then you c compress again. So the hmm. job of the pumping of the heart is being done by your hands. Hmm. So as you do that, blood supply is maintained to the organ so, kind of yeah, so, so that you don't die. And the next thing that is very important is to have automat automated electrical uh, uh, external defibrillators. What we use to you know, to correct these rhythm disturbances by giving a shock, hmm. which is done in the hospitals. Hmm. These should be placed in all public places. But can yeah. people, normal people, yes, be absolutely. trained to use that? This automated electric, uh, external defibrillators hmm. 
are programmed to give instructions. Okay. Right? So if you place those pads, ideally what should happen is you identify a person hmm. who's who suddenly fallen unconscious, you're not trained, you start CPR. Hmm. Allow somebody to call for help, call for a professional medical help. Hmm. And you're giving CPR. In the meantime, you get the AED, hmm. attach the pads. The AED has got a you know a computerized algorithm which will analyze the ECG okay. rhythm. And it will identify rhythms which are shockable. Mm. Now, when you have a cardiac arrest, there are mm. shockable rhythms and non-shockable rhythms. Mm. Majority of these are no, are shockable rhythms. Mm. So the AED will analyze and will loudly tell you this is a shockable rhythm, ready to give shock. Then you stay out. The shock is delivered, and okay. then you continue the CPR. And if the rhythm has reverted to normal, the AED announces that. Mm. You know, and then by the you know then you can continue to. Uh, support the patient until the uh, the medical or paramedical workers are there to okay. see. And if this is not done in time, mm. life is lost. Which is why it is very important for people to be aware of, you know, CPR techniques. Mm. It should, it should, it is mandatory. I think it should be made mandatory mm. for schools, for educational institutions, offices, offices malls, everywhere, everywhere. malls mm. police, uh, mm. you know, the fire services, etc. To learn this thing, in, uh, the housing societies, yeah, housing societies, housing societies, yeah. and. Mm. Like I said initially, health can only happen with public-private uh, partnership. So, AED should be installed, mm. you know, by the governments, by societies, mm. by maybe the uh, sports associations, etc. You should have AEDs available. The, the, you, you can really make a difference. You can save a life by knowing CPR. Mm. And especially when young adults or youngsters, when they are having some kind of like um, sports or something, uh, they should have these kind of equipments. Yeah, any, like, any, any even especially like the, uh, like MMA, mixed martial arts, and yeah. all of these things are so much in rise these days. So, and no, these are physical contact, and they can actually absolutely. directly cause absolutely physical contact. Sports mm. are at a high risk of uh, you know sudden deaths because mm. there's a condition called as commotio cordis, where normal hearts, mm. if there's a sudden blunt, forceful blunt impact, the heart mm. can st go to go into a standstill, and people can die. Mm. Okay, so that is there, and not only sports events, but mm. even cultural events like the garba events that we. We spoke True. of the Durga Puja events mm. that happen all over the uh, country and all these events where there are a lot of people coming in, the mm. melas and other things that happen or conferences that happen, mm. you should have these ADs and uh, you know these uh, uh, things available so that in, if the need arises, life mm. can be saved. Right and Very as you important. mentioned doctor, like self-awareness is important, like Absolutely. we should only participate in something when we know our cardiac health is able to take care of that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I, I mean, I, I would like to say that, you know, uh, our country, the culture is, uh, fitness is not a part of our culture. That culture needs to change. Mm. We There is a lot of focus. You, you, you take Australia, for example, or mm. South Africa, mm. for example, any average house, household or any kid there is probably playing five sport at a time. True. You know, here in India, sport is not, probably our population is huge. We don't have the maidans and, uh, you know, spaces. I think in India, yeah. it's, the culture is more about these days, about yeah. aesthetics. Yes. So people want shortcuts to look a certain way rather yeah. than feel a certain so, way. So that's the point. Shortcuts, there are no shortcuts. Yeah. Right. Being aware of your health mm. and taking responsibility for your health mm. is very important. Yeah. Thank you so much, doctor, for giving us so much time and helping us to know about so many things. Right. Thank uh, you. Do you want to say something in the conclusion to all of the viewers who are watching? Well, uh, first of all, you know, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. It is always, you know, knowledge and awareness is the weapon that we have which can prevent uh, disease and a fatal disease like heart disease. So, like I said earlier, be responsible for your own health, be aware and not only make a change or difference to your own health, but also to the people around. So be aware, be responsible, be healthy. That's all I'll say. Keep healthy and have a healthy, a healthy heart life. Thank you so yeah. much, Doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you.